we find a big difference between people who played Pokemon in their childhood versus those who didn't. Um, and so those people who are Pokemon experts not only develop a unique brain representation for Pokemon and visual cortex, but the most interesting part to us is that the location of that response to Pokemon is consistent across people. It's a great mystery. How does experience uh, contribute to shaping the brain? And this really is an opportunity to use a unique stimulus and a very intense experience during childhood. Second of all, because Pokemon game used a handheld device, you're limited by the length of your hands, really. It provided kind of a natural experiment, but was a somewhat controlled setting. The people we were looking to scan played a lot of Pokemon in their childhood, so somewhere between 1995 and 1998, they were five and eight years old. These are subjects who can name hundreds of Pokemon and they have almost lifelong visual experience beginning in childhood with Pokemon. And then the other group of people that we were looking for were people that were the exact opposite. They never played Pokemon, they, have no, they know nothing about it. We put them in a fMRI scanner and then show them different kinds of stimuli. So they'll see common uh, stimuli such as faces or places or, or words or objects. And also they'll be seeing uh, Pokemon stimuli. The Pokemon region that we observed, it was in high-level visual cortex, the part of the brain that's involved in recognizing things like words and faces. It helps us pinpoint which theory of brain organization might be the most responsible for determining how your visual cortex develops from childhood to adulthood. Basically looking at them at the central vision and because they were really small, place them in the particular fold of the brain that we know gets input from the central part of your retina or central vision. So if you look at Pokemon, they're very small and they you use your central vision so they land in a part of your the center of your retina, whereas stimuli like this room, for example, go to the periphery of your retina. And so because they have different locations on your retina, they have different locations in your brain. And it turns out that the Pokemon region emerges in a part of your brain that responds to information from the center of your retina. And so that finding suggests that the very way that you look at a visual stimulus, like a Pokemon or words, determines why your brain is organized the way it is. And that's useful going forward because it might suggest that visual deficits like dyslexia or face blindness might result simply from the way you look at stimuli. And so that's, it's a promising future avenue. For more, please visit us at stanford.edu.